If you're interested in making a detailed platformer just like this one, within Game Maker, using drag and drop, then keep watching. G'day gamers. In previous tutorials we've added our collisions, our sprites, and we've added an enemy. But our game doesn't look very good. In this lesson we're going to look at adding tiles to make the game look a bit better. Now the tiles we'll be using are from the OpenPixel project. There's a link in the description. Make sure you grab my link below because it contains a zip file that has all the sprites that you need. So the first thing we want to do is drag in that sprite. It's called Jungle Terrain. Let's just drag that in and that'll create a new sprite within Game Maker. Now I'm just going to call it S underscore jungle and we want to make a tile set out of this. So if we go to tile sets, right click and say create tile set. I'm going to call it T underscore jungle. I'm going to set the width and the height to 32 because that is the size of the tile set. And then we want to select the sprite. So just select the jungle and it appears there. We can hold down control and shift and use the wheel mouse to zoom in and out. And there's our tile set. Now let's go into the room. And let's start adding that. Now, first thing I want to do though is make the room a little bit bigger. I want to make it longer. So I'm going to go down to the width of the room and set it at 1280. And that'll just stretch it out. Now, in order to add tiles, we need to create a tile layer. So just under enemy, I'm going to click and go down to create new tile layer. And I'm just going to call this tiles underscore mid meaning it's the middle layer because we are going to start layering them. We're going to have tiles above and below, and this is our middle layer. I like to place a lot of the tiles that you're going to walk on on the middle layer. Now I'm just going to hide the collisions for the moment, and we can just hide the player and the enemy. Now for our tile mid, we need to select the tile set. So just here, and then select what we already chose, and now you get all the tiles to start laying them down. So how they work is there is a base and then there's a tile above, just sort of as a capping for the top of the tile. And by doing it this way, it makes the player look like they are walking on the tile. So I'm going to start laying these down. Now you can do it however you like. So you place the tiles with the left mouse and you can remove them with the right mouse. So one more thing to notice is you can actually select multiple tiles at once and then place them down that way. So I'm going to speed up the footage here of me placing down my tiles. And then I'll talk to you at the end about a few more things. Now there's a blank one here or a background one that you can use. And also if you want to place some design elements here, you can grab some of these and you can use the flip or the mirror to move them around so they just give it a bit of variety when you add them. Now you can also copy and paste up here. There's a select tiles. So you'd select a bunch and click copy or cut with control C or control X and then you can paste them in somewhere different if you like. So that's all for my mid. I've left a gap here because I want to place a tile behind that so that it appears that this, the one in front is actually in front. So I'm going to make a new tile layer under tile mid. I'm going to call it tiles mid underscore back. So this is a layer that's between our tiles back and our tiles mid. So it's tiles mid back. And we once again select our tile set. And now what you can do is you can place things behind that mid just to give it a bit more dimension. So if I've liked something I've placed, I can select it, do a control C, and with the new one you can mirror it and then suddenly you've got two of them. So it's really simple to do things like that. And then so they don't look exactly the same, just add a few differences. 
Now I want to utilize the bridge and have it here, but I want the player to appear like they are walking over it. So the bridge has a back and a front. So let's take the back portion. And if we try to place it here, it's going to cause problems. So let's go back to our mid and then we can place it there. And now let's create another layer, but this time above the player. And let's call that tiles underscore four. Standing for foreground. Now you can have a mid four if you need. I'm not going to use it today. Set your tile set. Now I'm going to take the bridge. Now when you grab this, actually, there's a few parts to it. So there's the left side. So I'm going to place that. And then there's a middle section. I want to place two of those. And then there's the right section. So that's all I'm going to add for the moment. So now let's add the collision layer to enable us to interact with it. So I'm going to grab the collision layer and drag it right up the top. And let's enable it. So at the moment, go back to our resources, go back to our object, our solid object. At the moment, this is what we have. So let's get rid of that. I can hold down the shift button and drag a big rectangle around it and press delete. So what we're going to do is place a collision block on each section that we want the player to walk on. And then what we'll do is we'll hide the collision layer and it'll make it appear that the player is walking on the tiles. Let's go in and do that. So I've, I've selected solid here. If I hold down the alt button, I can bring it up into the room and then just click to add it. So you can, once you've added one, you can click and drag and make it over a whole section. And then you can copy and paste or you can hold down alt to add a new one. And basically we're just going to fill in the sections where we want the player to walk. Now for this section, I want the player to be able to walk all the way across here, but also be able to walk down here. So I'm just going to add one here and then drag it across all the way. Now let's hide the collision layer. Let's bring the player back and the enemy and let's place them where we want them. So I'm going to place the player up here to start with and for the enemies, uh, we can place one down the bottom here and one over this side. So let's click play and see what that looks like. Great, so we can actually stand on the tiles, we can walk on them, the enemies can walk on them as well. And uh, when we go all the way over here though, the camera doesn't follow us and we can't leave the screen. The tiles are looking great but we do need to improve on the ability to be able to see beyond the screen. And we can go up here, that's great. And you can see that the rope bridge is in front of the player, it looks really good. So if you do want to add a camera, if you go down here and we go to our viewports and cameras down in our room properties, go to viewport zero, and all the way down we have an object following section. So let's change the object to follow to be the player. And the border means how close we have to get to the edge before the camera will operate. I'm going to set this at half the width, which is 320 because our width is 640. And if it's set to half, it means the player will be in the middle. And when they move, the camera will scroll then. So if we click play now, we should be able to come over here and the camera follows us straight away. So that is looking much better than what we had before. It's starting to really take shape. In the next tutorial, we'll look at adding a parallax scrolling background. So if you haven't already, please hit that like button or the subscribe button so you know when the next video is coming. It also helps me to make more content that way. Now the platformer we're making here uses tiles, but all the collisions are done with objects and objects can be very slow. My course over at Udemy is about making a tile based platformer that uses all tile based collisions and that makes the game much faster to run. If you're interested in that, there's a discount coupon code down there that you can use. It's a really great course and it's actually the highest rated game maker course on Udemy. So thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you next time.